starting to record now. Okay, hello everyone. This is the Circuit Python Weekly for May 2nd, 2022, Monday. This is the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Circuit Python development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and Circuit Python, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. We host this meeting on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it/discord. We hold the meeting in the uh, Circuit Python Dev text channel and the Circuit Python voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes document doc, uh, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add that calendar to your favorite calendar app. We send notifications about upcoming meetings via, Dis via Discord, and if you'd like to receive these notifications, uh, ask um, one of the moderators on Discord to add you to the Circuit Pythonistas Discord role. There's a notes document to accompany this meeting and recording, which is done in Google Docs. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video. So you use the doc to view, you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run like 45 to 90 minutes. So this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Discord. Check the pinned messages in the CircuitPython dev channel to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the next meeting. The meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news, where we look at all things CircuitPython. The next is state of CircuitPython in libraries. The next is hug reports, then status updates, and finally in the weeds. Um, since we have some people who are at PyCon at the moment and they're on lunch break, Right now, we're going to skip around a little bit in the order of things. So um, let's see. Katni, do you want to do, like, for instance, the library section, or do you want me to do that, and you just want to do, um, like, hug and status? Just hug and status. OK. All right. So let me move down to hug and status. So we'll add the three people who are joining us from PyCon before lunch. Let's let's give them uh, a chance to speak up about about things. So let me find you. I'll start with. Um, let's see. So uh, Jeff is at the airport, so he's not online. I'll read him later. So, Katni, I'm skipping down to hug reports for you. All right. And I'll take a timestamp here. Okay, go ahead and you can do hug reports. So, first of all, thank you to Adafruit for sending us to PyCon. Uh, hug report to Keith, the EE, for testing, updating, and PRing all of the examples from 2019 to the PyCon 20, 2022 repo, so folks had examples to work with during the open spaces. Hugs to the PyCon organizers for putting together such an amazing conference, to the Education Summit for welcoming my talk, uh, everyone who attended the open spaces, to Object Fox and Akubera on GitHub for submitting their own examples to the PyCon 2022 repo, a uh, hug report for the folks that have joined us for sprints, to Jeff and Melissa for joining me at PyCon this year, to Tectric for stopping by our open spaces and helping out with the sprints on Discord, to Foamy Guy for all the help he's been providing on Discord for the sprints, and many more I've missed. Uh, you all get a group hug. Okay, thank you so much, Caddy, for uh, being one of the people who represent us at PyCon. And uh, Melissa, why don't you go ahead? Okay. I want to thank Adafruit for sponsoring us to go to PyCon this year. And I wanted to give a hug report to everyone who helped out or helped put together PyCon US 2022. To Jeff and Katni for all your help at PyCon. To Tectric for hanging out with us at PyCon. To Rose for all your help at PyCon. Having an extra person is super helpful. And Paul Cutler for having me as a guest on the Circuit Python show. The episode was released today. Um, everyone who stopped by the open spaces during PyCon, everyone joining us for sprints at PyCon, 
all the wonderful people I met here and a group hug to anyone I missed. Okay, thank you also, Melissa, for being at PyCon. And um, Tektrick, do you want to, since you also want to eat lunch, would you like to uh, do your hug report now? Tektrick's not here anymore. Oh, he's not? Okay. Yep. Oh, there he is. No, I'm here. I, I don't have to go to lunch, though. I'm not there. I wish I was. Oh, I thought you were. Okay. For some reason, I thought you were. Okay. No, I was. I've already left it already, unfortunately. All right. Okay. All right. So I'll just, so you're not in a hurry. So we'll go on to status reports. Okay. So, uh, Katni, why don't we go on to your status report? All right. So last week was PyCon prep and travel to PyCon. I attended and gave a talk at the Education Summit. Hosted many sprints at the Education Summit, which was sort of an intro to Circuit Python for folks that were attending. Uh, hosted open spaces during the conference, uh, which were time for people to get familiar with Circuit Python on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Um, obviously, also uh, met up with a bunch of folks that I already knew and met some new folks. Uh, the the conference has been amazing, um, and this week I'll be hosting sprints at PyCon. Uh, and then Wednesday I travel home and whatever I'm doing on Thursday and Friday, I have no idea because I haven't looked at my list. So I have a, a short status update this time because uh, I don't actually know what I'm doing for work um, when I get home, but I will figure that out at that time. Okay, thank you. We, we look forward to a, a more thorough debrief when you get relaxed again when you get back home. Uh, Melissa, can you go ahead? Yeah, um, I, last week I finished up the capacitive and resistive touchscreen drivers for the Raspberry Pi to a point they are basically functioning. Uh, I prepped for PyCon, then traveled here. Uh, I attended uh, the talks and uh, went to the booths and talked with a lot of other people. Um, I helped Katni with the mini sprint at the Education Summit. I helped uh, with hosting the open spaces at PyCon this week. I am helping with hosting the sprints at PyCon. Then I'm traveling home, and I'm not sure what else after that. OK, thank you. We're also looking forward to hearing about your experiences in more detail. OK, so you, you folks can stay on or whatever. You don't, whatever you'd like to do, uh, probably you're great. We're going to head out. Yep. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for letting us go okay. early. It's been great to talk. Thank All you. Right. Talk to you later. Okay, we'll go back up uh, to the original order of stuff. And we'll start with community news. Um, I'll be doing a lot of the stuff myself because everybody else who usually takes various sections isn't here. Um, but I'll just say a few things. There's a, there's a ton of news in the upcoming newsletter that's coming out tomorrow, the Python or Microcontroller newsletter. Um, and would you like to actually, like, as long as you're here, are you interested in, like, going over what's in the in there, or would you like me to do it? No, I'd be glad to. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, usually I don't go over this, but uh, like Dan said, there is quite a lot in this newsletter of interest uh, this week. Um, MicroPython turns nine years old. Um, it... It was uh, nine years since the first line of code was written, and there's all kinds of stats on how uh, MicroPython has grown in the last year and what they're looking to do, um, including version 1.19, which is coming very soon. Um, CircuitPython 7.30 Beta 2 was released. I think we're getting closer to a... Uh, a stable release for the 7.3 branch. Um, I've got a lot of PyCon US coverage uh, showing what uh, the Adafruit team has been doing and uh, uh, also uh, what happened at PyLadies with uh, the uh, auction of an Adafruit goodie box. So uh, we're always happy to sponsor um, Pi ladies and, and other great organizations. Um, there's a new um, scripting language called PyScript, which can be embedded in uh, HTML that's coming out. And we have, as project of the week, we're highlighting 
projects by uh, students at the Boston College Physical Computing uh, course, which are, are, have they've been building assistive technology projects, and they all use Circuit Python. So there's a number of projects, including um, Dan Halbert, our our resident uh, MC here, uh, who dropped in the students and uh, checked out the projects. So. There's there's much more and more projects and what's been happening in Circuit Python. I really encourage you to su subscribe. Uh, I really would like to see the subscribers hit ten thousand before the end of the year, but uh, I can't do that unless uh, everybody uh, hears about it and and subscribes if they're interested. So if you have friends or colleagues or something, please. Uh, send a link to uh, adafruitdaily.com, ask them to subscribe to the Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Thank you. Okay, thank you, man. And I'll just sort of remind you, if you want to submit news items, uh, send, th send it to cpnews at adafruit.com or submit a pull request to the uh, newsletter repo or tag us on Twitter with, the pound cir with uh, hash circuit Python. Any of those will work to get news into the newsletter. They're all fine. Okay, so we'll move on to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. I'll take another timestamp. And uh, let's go over the stats for this week. A lot of this has happened in the past, uh, even today. So these, this is as of, I think, like Sunday midnight or Saturday midnight. So it's a little behind we run, when we run the weekly job. So in the past week, um, 29 pull requests were merged by 15 authors. There were eight reviewers. There were 18 closed issues and 16 open issues. So we're just about the same, a little bit better. In the CircuitPython core, there were 16 pull requests merged by 12 authors. There were five reviewers. There were still 14 open pull requests. Some of those are drafts or on hold for CircuitPython 8. There were 10 closed issues by five people and eight open by six people. There are 523 open issues. Um, we've got zero open issues for the 7.2.x milestone. We have six open issues for the 7.3.0 open uh, milestone, uh, 30 issues for 7xx, and 12 for 800. Uh, those 12 for 800 are things that we have to defer until 800. 19 open issues for the library, and 455 long-term, which are discussion topics or enhancements or long-term bugs that um, are not quite as, uh, as uh, demanding or their workarounds. And there's one open issue for uh, on, on, in the support category. In the CircuitPython library world, in the past week, there were 13 pull requests merged by six authors, and there were six reviewers. Uh, there are 18 open pull requests right now. That's way down from what it used to be. People are really doing a great job of cleaning up. There were seven closed issues and seven opened issues, so we're on. We're, we're not closing more. We like to close more than we open, but uh, that's all right. There are 632 open issues, and there are 197 good first issues. So if you're just getting started on CircuitPython, uh, take a look at the good first issue uh, tag label in GitHub, and you can see things that range from documentation to simple fixes to uh, type annotation, many things that are good for a first contribution. Um, in the Blinka world, Blinka, remember, is um, it's an emulation of the CircuitPython uh, hardware native modules and some other things, which can run on, under CPython, under regular Python, on Raspberry Pi and other uh, single board computers, and even on uh, regular PCs to some extent also. Uh, not so much activity. There were no pull requests. There are still five open pull requests. There was one issue closed and one issue open, and there were 74 open issues. And there have been just over 10,000 uh, downloads in the past month. And we're supporting currently supporting 88 boards under Blanca, which is terrific. All right. Uh, let me 
go back to make sure I'm not skipping over anything in terms of explanations. We'll move on to hug reports. And I'll take a timestamp. Uh, I'll start in hug reports and then we'll go alphabetically through the rest of the people, uh, not including those people who have already uh, gone. And I'll read anybody who can't attend. So I'd like to thank uh, Jeff, um, Melissa, Katney, Rose, and Tetrick. And Tetrick, you said you, you were at Py PyCon, is that correct? I, I miss, wasn't sure. Yep, I was. I, uh, I left uh, late Saturday. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, that's what I thought. And I don't know of anybody else, but if anybody else had gone, let me know, and we'd like to keep track of who went. So thanks to you all a great deal for attending PyCon, for absorbing new ideas, for talking to people and introducing people to CircuitPython. That's terrific. It's really wonderful to do that, and I'm sure you got out a lot out of it. Um, and I'd also like to thank the PyCon Sprint participants, that is people who we don't necessarily hadn't met before, but who are working on things for CircuitPython right now, uh, or in the next day or two, working on sprints, such as doing type annotation or fixing bugs or implementing new things. That's great. Okay, uh, next is David Cloud, who's lurking, and he gives a group hug. Uh, let me take a timestamp here. I keep forgetting this. Uh, next is Deshipu, uh, who also can't be here, but says, thanks uh, to Dan Halbert for fixing a nasty display I.O. bug and explaining it to me. And thanks to all the CircuitPython community at PyCon for spreading the love. Uh, next is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, First talk report this week is uh, Paul SK, uh, who tried out and showed some examples using the new tab layout uh, that I've been working on lately. So it was really nice to see uh, that getting used. And uh, Paul made uh, some really cool stuff with it. Uh, to uh, see Walter, um, who submitted the, the set next code file functionality into the core. This was actually a couple of months back. I remember seeing it when it went by, but I just had the, uh, the opportunity to play with it for the first time the other day, and it is really, really cool. So I wanted to uh, give a hug report to see Walter for that. Um, uh, JetBrains, which is actually the company that makes PyCharm, they, they randomly found me on Twitch the other day and um, offered me... A, uh, a bundle license for all of their IDEs because I was telling them about using PyCharm for a bunch of stuff. So that was really cool to see them stop by and of course to offer me uh, that license. Um, user on, I think it's GitHub, uh, Shultronics. Um, this person created a PR inside of Blinka that allows uh, Blinka Display.io to work on PCs using a, a library that I created a little while back. So. Uh, over time, it had uh, fallen out of support, and there were a couple places where it needed fixed, and this person came by and made the PR to fix it, so that was really cool to see as well. Uh, Katni and Maker Melissa for doing the sprints at PyCon, uh, as well as everybody else uh, echoing what Dan said, who attended PyCon and, and has been spreading the uh, the CircuitPython. Um, a couple users that are doing the sprints today, and this is definitely not a complete list. Um, I'll try to, to save these off and make a, a full list next week because I think these people definitely deserve recognition. Uh, but a couple of the ones I know for now are uh, Jimitri, uh, KT Ken Kenzie 37 Lucky Dave 88 and RM Blau. And again, these are all folks that are working uh, on CircuitPython, presumably for the first time uh, during sprints out at PyCon. They're there in person as far as I understand it. Uh, so they've been uh, doing typing PRs and stuff like that. So thank you to all those folks and anybody who I missed. Uh, and then uh, last one for me is thank you to Tammy Makes Things who started helping out uh, reviewing some typing PRs uh, recently. I definitely always appreciate folks getting involved in, uh, in reviewing. So thanks. Okay, thank you, Foamy Guy. Okay, uh, Jason P. is not here, but I'll read theirs. Um, uh, thanks to Dan H. and Naradoc for the weekend macro pad and HID help. Thanks. And now I'll read uh, Jeff's. Uh, Jeff is also, I, I know he was at the airport a little while ago, and I'm not sure if he's on a plane yet or not. So he's missing the meeting. Uh, thanks to Katni, so nice to see you again at PyCon. Maker Melissa, so nice to finally meet you. Uh, thanks to both of them a second time for staying to run the sprints as well. 
Thanks to everyone else I met at PyCon. You were awesome and it filled my heart with joy to be in the same space with you all learning about Python and much more. Thanks to a ton of people at PyCon. Uh, a ton of people at PyCon know about Adafruit and love what we do. Those that didn't yet really wanted to hear about it. And thanks to Dan H for holding down the fort. Okay, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, hi, just a group hug to everybody. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. So I can type, just type four. Four digits and punctuation marks without making an error. Okay. <laughs> All right, we did Katni already. Uh, next is Keith the EE, who unfortunately can't be at the meeting. Um, Keith says, thanks to Katni for helping with the blue fruit pull requests and guiding me through to getting it up and running while she was already swamped with prep for PyCon. Thanks to Naradoc for continuing to help answer questions about microcontrollers across a number of Discord servers, helping making make sure the CircuitPython world is constantly welcome. And a group hug to everyone. All right, and let me make a guess about the uh, timestamp. We did Maker Melissa. Uh, I'll read Mark Gambler, who's, um, who's not here. Thanks to everyone at PyCon introducing new people to CircuitPython, which I could have been there. Group hug to everyone else. And next is Tammy Makes Things, who is not in the chat. I thought she was. Okay. Um, thanks to Foamy Guy for more great display I.O. streams recently, which are helping me think about how I want to design my card deck library. That is a playing card deck library. I'm looking forward to Solitaire or whatever. Uh, that would be great. And group hug to the community for being amazing. And let's move on to Tetric now. Pull up the hit. Ha, yep. Uh, yeah, so uh, a hug to Katni, Maker Melissa, Jepler, and Crayola for an awesome job at PyCon, uh, especially the open spaces that I was able to attend. Uh, it was an absolute blast getting to meet you uh, all in person, finally. Uh, and just getting to chat and hang out face to face. Um, again, for Katni and Maker Melissa for facilitating the development sprints. I'm super excited to see all the contributions, and I'm going to try to help review some of those PRs. Um, to Tammy makes things for taking a look at one of my PRs, um, echoing um, what's already been said. Um, super nice to 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 get that feedback and a group hug. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to status updates now. Status updates is where we talk about what we're up to weekly in the CircuitPython world. And if you'd like, not in the CircuitPython world, like I didn't get a lot done because I'm renovating my kitchen or I'm going on a trip or something like that. Whatever you'd like to report is fine. Uh, I'll start to, uh, as an example. The host goes first and then we go alphabetically. Um, I released CircuitPython 7.3.0 beta last week and that was to catch up on about three weeks of fixes and additions. I always think that uh, we do this more often than we do and then I realize oh it's been like three weeks or six weeks or a month or whatever or two months and we really need to get a release out. So we try to do them early and often. Uh, I fixed a SAMD21 issue that caused displays not to work across VM instantiations. Uh, Deshipu noticed this and filed the bug, and then I sort of sat down and said, what is really going on here, and found out some problems with tick handling, but it was exclusive to SAMD21. I'm continuing to work with an Espressive engineer uh, through their GitHub repo, their ESP IDF repo, on a fix for long delays between I2C transactions on the ESP32 S2. So uh, I thought I had a fix, and um, I had a simple test program. Uh, the engineer made a different fix, um, which worked for him, and it works also with the simplest pro test program, but CircuitPython was still showing some problems. So uh, we were talking about maybe giving him CircuitPython to try out, but it's so large and it would be so hard to debug without um, being 
sort of familiar with it that I instead spent the time to take the test program and make it more like CircuitPython, which I did by adding a free RTOS task that does something, kind of imitates what um, CircuitPython does with the second task to run uh, USB stuff. And I can now get this test program to imitate the same errors that I see in CircuitPython. So I passed it back to the Espressif engineer and hopefully we'll continue to move forward on that. And the next thing I'm doing is, um, starting today, is working on testing all aspects of the native modules on ESP32 S3, which is a board that just came out and we know of problems and we'd like to test uh, the existing native modules uh, more thoroughly. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and in the process of doing that, I'm also going to write a guide about how to do testing of um, a new port or a new chip or something like that with a bunch of test programs. You know, in, in a perfect world, this stuff would be automated. It's very hard to automate that and to set up, make test jigs to do this kind of thing. But at the very least, we can make up a comprehensive set of Python scripts and some wiring instructions for uh, helping you to test these native modules comprehensively. Okay, next I will read uh, David Gloud's uh, status report. Last week, first working prototype of mouse emulation to encode a texture from an in-memory buffer into Game Builder Garage, which is a quote game on Switch. Um, right now, reading data from a binary GTD file, list all the GTD files in Flash and process them one by one. This week, display GTD image file in display I.O. File has implicit palette, one byte for the most frequent color index, and 4096 bytes for the 64 by 64 pixels of the image. So I'm not familiar with GTD, but this sounds interesting. Uh, next is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, last week, uh, first one is a bit of a bummer, but I found out that I accidentally deleted uh, some work that I had started on making a tab layout. So um, this is a uh, status update and a, a learn from my mistake type uh, warning. Uh, back up your code early and often. Don't do your development only on the microcontroller. Definitely always copy it back to your PC and if possible, put it in version control because uh, all those things will make it harder to lose your work. Um, once I figured this out, I did just start working on it again. So I re-implemented it back up to the same place uh, where I had it before, the same functionality at least. And uh, as a silver lining, I do think I got the code a little bit nicer uh, this time around. So we made some improvements in the process of rebuilding it. So that was cool. Um, testing out uh, various PRs, uh, including some typing uh, PRs. And we've got a bunch more of those to go through this week uh, from the folks at, uh, at the PyCon Sprints, as well as uh, probably the one that I found most interesting this week that I looked into is the Blinka uh, PR to get the uh, Blinka display IO back to working on the PCs. Um, that's something I like to play with a lot. So I was super happy to see that one go by. Um, the, the other thing last week was, uh, well, it's kind of in between last week and this week over the weekend. Uh, I watched a lot of the great talks that were given at PyCon uh, through the online dashboard. So it was uh, lots of interesting stuff to uh, watch people talk about. Um, so great stuff there. I encourage folks to check out those talks uh, if you haven't. Um, this week, I have been uh, today helping folks remotely who are at the sprints working on uh, PRs and anything else, um, you know, new contributors to CircuitPython. Um, so I've been helping out folks doing that stuff. And then uh, after the meeting this afternoon, I'll be going back to do some uh, reviews on those things. And I'll pop the stream on so I can kind of talk to folks uh, live. So if anyone's interested in that, you can check it out. Um, a couple other things this week, I want to still finish up the tab layout class. That's kind of what I had uh, intended to sit down and do last week when I, when I found that I had deleted it. Um, so the last thing, the last sort of functionality that needs to be done is uh, touch uh, touch functionality. Right now, it, it kind of works and it draws everything correctly, and you can call functions to move between the tabs, but there's no actual touch input yet. So that's kind of the last thing to do. A um, couple other things I did this week, uh, or again, kind of over the weekend, was uh, implement a, a snake game. I had never never implemented the game Snake before. Um, so that was kind of fun. I implemented that with Display.io using tile grids, and it runs on a Pi Gamer and Pi Badger, uh, but it could probably be tweaked to run on other devices as well pretty easily. 
Um, and then kind of adding on to that, I figured out how to use that supervisor set next code file to kind of integrate it so that the uh, sort of stock Pi Badger example that has the um, couple examples of badges like hello, my name is badge, and then a custom image one and a QR code one, um, figured out how to use that supervisor uh, API to integrate that with the game. So you can like show your badge normally and then push a button and go over and play the game. And then uh, when the game is over, you can go back to the badge. Um, and you could, of course, use that for other stuff beyond the Snake game as well, because it allows you to just specify what file you want. So I think that's a neat thing that will allow folks to kind of show off uh, not only their badge and the stuff, uh, like their name and contact, but also maybe like a actual script that they've been working on or something like that. So um, that's what I got for this week. Thanks. Thank you very much, Foamy Guy. Okay, I'll read uh, Jepler's. Take a time code. Uh... Last week, floppy IO merged. So this is a native module inside um, CircuitPython. The capabilities are less than the Arduino floppy, I, floppy library, but still it enables reading raw flux and MFM format floppies. PyCon, I attended Friday through Sunday for the talks, but sadly had to miss the sprints just due to scheduling. While at PyCon, I helped each day with an open space, letting people learn at their own pace with the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit and helping when they had questions. This week, I'm exhausted. I know that feeling, post PyCon. Uh, release Adafruit CircuitPython floppy library, which take care, care of things like running the drives motors, blog about some of the talks I attended and some of the things I learned in the hallway track. If you have time to watch just one talk video once they go up, I recommend the keynote by Sarah Isaun about the Event Horizon Telescope, which wouldn't be possible without Python to do the data analysis. However, many a talks I attended were amazing, and I always heard that in the other room there was an amazing talk happening at the same moment. Soon, taking time off from May 16th to June 24th, I might drop by, drop in for a weekly meeting somewhere in there, but being a lot less plugged in is among my goals. Also, learning more about Jupyter Notebooks. It's on my list of things to do without hardware while taking time off. Okay. Thanks, Jeff, for that. Okay, Jerry, would you like to go ahead? Sure. Um, so didn't have a lot of time uh, this last week, but uh, did struggle along with a, an ongoing RFM9X issue uh, in the library uh, regarding using some non-default modem settings. Um, turns out the circuit, circuit play th Python library doesn't play well with the Radiohead library, probably not with itself either, for some of the some of the non-standard settings or non-default settings. Still investigating, still puzzled as to exactly what's going wrong. Um, according to data sheet, you know, it looks like there's good reason for, for the confusion. Um, there's a lot going on there and, and some funny settings, when, especially when you get to some of the higher and lower um, spreading factors and things like that. So um, really not much progress with it. It's going to have to wait a few weeks for me to do anything else with it. If anyone else wants to take a look and play with it, they're welcome to. There's an open issue on the um, uh, repository. And yeah, I'll be away for the next two weeks, and uh, hopefully with a little or no internet access and cell phone access. So see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Thank you, Jerry, and I hope you have a nice break. Thanks. OK. So now I will read uh, Tammy Makes Things, who's missing the meeting. Um, last week, only one Twitch stream this week because of a hardware issue with my computer, which I hope has now been solved. Continued working on my display I.O. card deck library. Submitted a PR for Piku to allow it to work properly with boards that have a lot of flash storage space. Did my first PR review and left comments hoping to do more PR reviews and join the review team soon. This week, tri Twitch streaming, hopefully Wednesday p.m. and Sunday a.m. Pacific time, and maybe one more pop-up stream now that I've hopefully gotten the hardware issue sorted out. Continuing to work on the Display I.O. card deck library, the easy stuff is out of the way, so now it comes the hard part of actually displaying cards and groups of cards on a display device. Hopefully setting down to a norm more normal work schedule and regular cadence for CircuitPython related activities. Okay, thanks for Tammy's contribution. Uh, Tectric, you can go ahead. Yep, so uh, this past week uh, I attended my first PyCon. Uh, it, was def it was an absolute blast, and I definitely learned a lot 
uh, both from the everyone from uh, Adafruit and working on Circuit Python and just uh, other the other talks in general. Uh, I also just finally finished moving out. Uh, super excited to do it in a few more months. Uh, hopefully that's the last one for a long while. Uh, in other non-software uh, related news, I finally designed my first uh, op piece of open source hardware, um, which was a PCB for the uh, auto lighting menorah I've been putting off for months. Uh, luckily, I have many more months to put it off before it's actually needed. Uh, and then my unfinished note <laughs> is that I continued uh, to review changes from a previous uh, PR that uh, I wasn't able to get to uh, until I had some downtime at PyCon. Um, this week I am refactoring the uh, ATEC or ATECC library, um, uh, as well as doing some other things there, such as setting type annotations while I'm, while I'm at it. Uh, additionally, I am finishing up some feature additions to libraries that I've been waiting the hard for the hardware for, um, particularly that's the Max 7219, um, and uh, unpacking everything in the new place, so um, that should take up probably the bulk of my time. And that's all. Okay, thank you, Tetrick, and I'm glad you got to go to, to PyCon. It's always much more interesting than I always at first thought first thing when I go. I've been two or three times. Um, finally, we have the in the weeds section, which is for longer discussion. Uh, I just added something because it occurred. Um, I think it was Foamy Guy who said that they lost some work. Um, so I'll just mention one thing, which I'm not quite sure where else to mention it, but I have always wanted uh, the various, the editor that I use, which happens to be Emacs, but it could be anybody's editor. It could be Mew or it could be PyCharm or something. It would be really nice if those editors had an easy way of writing to CircuitPy and also writing at the same time to some local storage on your host computer so that you never were going to lose work. Um, and I have I would be surprised. I, surprisingly, I can't find plugins for in, IDEs for this because it doesn't seem to be a use case. But uh, if anybody would like to work on that, I think that'd be a wonderful project, uh, which would have be useful for not just Circuit Python but many other things. So if you if you get hankering to work on this, uh, please do and uh, you know choose your favorite IDE or editor, and maybe we can do it for more than one. I don't know if anybody has any co uh, comments about that. But, yeah, I will say it, it was me that, that lost stuff, and I yeah. would be definitely a uh, thousand percent on board for that. That would um, that would have helped out. I'll also mention this other project, uh, Blinka CLI is the name of this project. So it's a little confusing with with our other Blinka, but this Blinka CLI was made by a different community member, uh, and I'll point it out because it's a command line tool, and it does have a backup. <clears throat> excuse me, a backup and a sync command, uh, which do basically allow you to copy all the stuff from a circuit pie drive onto your local computer. Um, so I don't know if it would be worth using something like that in the IDE plugins, but if so, then a bunch of the logic for actually like copying things over is already handled inside of there. Um, but uh, if it were a plugin, you wouldn't have to remember to do it. And that definitely would have saved me because uh, I do know about it. I just don't remember to do it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, Everybody would like it, and I. It's not that I added. Uh, I think it was uh, for VS Code. I added something that flushed the file system, which VS Code one didn't do, do, and that was kind of easy to do. So it's not actually that hard to write a plugin, at least for some of these editors. Nice. I'll I'll look really into done. that. Yeah. Yeah. Even on the simplest version, if it just saved in two places, I think that would be probably plenty for most use cases. Right. Right, it would it would solve the problem. Yeah, it would be it would it would it would be a simple solution. It doesn't have to be that fancy. All right, so I hope I put a bug in in somebody's ear. Okay, so that's that's really it. Uh, thank you very much. Is there anything else that anybody has would like to bring up? If not, uh, we'll say bye. This has been a relatively short meeting, partly because uh, people weren't here. But I appreciate everybody coming to this meeting. The next meeting will be uh, Monday at the same time. 
There aren't any holidays coming up until the last Monday in May, which is Memorial Day in the U.S., and so we'll move, we'll move that meeting to Tuesday. But we, you can hear, you'll hear about that in a few weeks. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, I will stop recording now.